One of the television networks ran a series of five programs on the early days of Christianity. And they included the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, one of the most graphic pictures I have ever seen. And among all the emblems of the world, none is admired, glorified, and worshiped as the cross. It was the instrument of Christ's suffering and death, and it's also the instrument of our salvation. The history of the cross is very interesting because it goes back to India, it goes back to China, long before Christ ever came. And the victim, as you know, was fastened to the cross by cords or his hands were nailed and he was left to die. And the heat of the sun, the pull of his body and the torture that he'd had before he was on the cross, it took sometimes two and three days and sometimes a week for a person to die on a cross. The most terrible, the most awful, the most painful way to die that we can imagine. But by the time of Constantine in the fourth century, and he had become a Christian or a professing Christian, it was as an instrument of torture, it had been abolished. And later, Christian nations started to use the cross as a symbol of Christianity. It was embossed upon their chariots, upon whatever they had, and the cross became the symbol of everything that Christianity stood for. And through such organizations as the Red Cross, it's become an international sign of goodwill and help to other people. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, it says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again to repentance, seeing that they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to open shame. Every time the gospel is proclaimed, those who hear the message and receive Christ as Savior come by the way of the cross. But if you neglect or refuse God's offer of love and mercy from the cross, you help crucify Jesus Christ. That's the reason it's wrong to say that the Jews crucified Christ as Christians said, especially in the Middle Ages, and they used to make, try to make Jews converts at the end of a sword or point a gun at their head or a knife at their throat to try to make them converted because they said they were Christ killers. They did not kill Christ. You know who killed Christ? All of us. We all had a part in his death because his death was planned before the foundation of the world because of sin. And the Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There are four dimensions of the cross that I think about when I talk about it. I think about the breadth of the cross. The love of Christ is manifested in the cross of Christ that includes everybody. God's love extends to Africa, to Asia, to Latin America, to Russia, to China, to America, to Canada, to the whole world. It includes you, whoever you are, whatever your religion, or if you have no religion, God loves you. And he says from the cross, I love you. Then there's the length of the cross. It has no measure. It extends from eternity to eternity, from everlasting to everlasting. When Noah built the ark, do you know how long it was? 450 feet long. When Solomon built the temple, you know how long it was? 60 cubits. If you build a shed for garden tools, you can measure the lumber with a ruler. But how can you measure the end to end of God's love in the cross? The Bible says, Paul said that God's love surpasses knowledge. There's no way that our finite minds can even begin to understand the love of God that would give his son on the cross to die for you because you and I deserve that death. 
we deserved hell and judgment. And then I think of the height of the cross. It extends to the throne of God. It doesn't matter how high heaven is. Through the cross, God draws all men to him. And you have to make a decision about Jesus Christ. Scientists are looking out into space further and further and further, but they can't get away from God. The subject of uh, astronomy and the subject of the space frontier is very exciting to me. There are scientists here tonight who know far more about the height of the universe than I can ever explain. But heaven is out there somewhere. We don't know exactly where. You say, do you believe heaven is a place? Yes, I believe it's a place. I believe I'm going to see the golden streets and walk on them. And I believe I'm going to live in a, well, I think I'll live in a shack. Some of you will live in mansions. Yes, heaven is going to be a glorious place. And you cannot go beyond God's love even in heaven. And then the depth of God's love and the cross. You can fall to the very bottomless pit of sin and degradation. And you can live like an animal. You can be a murderer. You can be a rapist. You can be anything. But you can't get beyond the love of God. The cross covers the, to the very gates of hell. How deep is it? There are people today that are trying to find how deep they can go into the heart of the earth and how deep space is. They can't get away from God because as we study the depths of energy, we're looking for unity. That's one of the reasons they're making that study in Illinois. And the Bible says, oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. It can draw every sinner up to the exalted height of heaven. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me, said Jesus. Think of the cross a moment and think of his suffering for you and for me. It said that Jesus endured five basic wounds that medical science defines as first, contusion, when they beat him on the head and tortured him and put a crown of thorns on him for you, laceration they bared his back and took long leather whips with steel pellets on the end and beat him until he was bleeding from head to toe that was the roman way they tortured prisoners before they took them to the cross then there was penetration when they crushed that crown of thorns on his brow and his head bled there was perforation when they drove the nails through his hands and feet there was incision when they put the spear in his side. That suffering, those nails through his hands and feet were driven by you and me and all the peoples of the world because we all had a part in the death of Christ because of our sins, our sins put into the cross. And you participate. You may be watching by television somewhere. And you would like to come to the cross tonight and find God's love and God's forgiveness and God's touch on your life. You'll see on the screen there a number. You can call it. And their counselor is standing by ready to talk with you. You might have to call several times, but keep calling. You'll get somebody. They'll be there all evening. And they'll help you and send you some literature to help you understand and to help you live the Christian life. And I'm going to ask people here after a while to come to Christ. And then I want us to look at the cross from another point of view. I want us to look at the sayings of Christ from the cross. We usually hear a sermon like this on Good Friday and that's about it. But most of us don't go to church on Good Friday. So we never hear it. There are 28 prophecies in the Old Testament about the cross. Whole chapters 